Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode. So today I'm joined by Chris, a spiritual teacher and sexual alchemist who many consider an expert on the masculine and feminine energies. His posts have been deeply influential in my work, often leaving me breathless because they hit me with so much truth. So I feel very honored to speak with him today. So Chris, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. What a beautiful introduction. <laughs> really, anybody's listening to this, head over to Chris's Facebook and just read the, the beauty that's there. Um, just to begin, do you want to share us a little bit about who you are, your journey, and maybe if you're open to specifically, maybe your journey with the feminine or with women or with relating? I'm very curious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. So I'm pretty unfamiliar with the introduction part with myself because I notice okay. it's always a little bit different every time yeah. I, I deliver it. So for me, my, my background and what I've done has always been around energy. And it's, it kind of began with me attempting to figure out myself first and attempting to kind of know my own energetics and as a child and and as a young man I was very uh, very sensitive to to feeling a lot of these things and at the beginning I assumed it was just uh, almost like a disability or a crutch and I needed to numb it so I went down the avenue of alcohol and, and drugs and things that I felt were necessary to have me feel a little bit more normal in myself. Uh, That quickly turned itself over and I was forced to do the work that I'm doing now. So I work mainly with men and women, um, working with masculine energy, feminine energy. Mm. I'm also a acupuncturist and I do different types of uh, body work and I also teach Qigong. Mm-hmm. and different things like that so for me it's always been about energy um the first point was me kind of seeing my own irregularities or my own dysfunctions as a young man and mm-hmm. trying to figure out well what does it mean to be a man and mm-hmm. why is it so painful to mm-hmm. attempt to be the thing that society is looking for me to be why does mm-hmm. it not sit right why does it cause me more pain than pleasure why does it feel like work why does the thought process of having to, you know, approach and court and seduce and engage with members right. of the opposite sex, why does that feel so foreign to me? Yeah. And I just felt a huge separation through that whole process. And the deeper I went in and done my own work with myself, and the deeper that I could kind of see what was going on in my, at that time, my acupuncture patients. So I started to engage with their energy in some different ways that was maybe not based on acupuncture to, to see how we were carrying trauma and, and different wounds in the body and how it usually came back to a dysfunction around how we related with ourselves sexually yes. and with others. Mm-hmm. And I was pretty blind to this for you know, many years after that, even though it was staring me in the face. Mm. Um, so that's kind of my entry point and at this point it's been about 10 years now that I've been working with both men and and women and with men it's more mentoring work it's more guidance Mm. work it's more communicatory work Mm -hmm. and with women it's far more energetically based so it's basically just energy work that I do with women in order to assist from a healthy masculine standpoint because I started to kind of level up in a way of recognizing so much of the trauma that women were handling around the yeah. fact that she wasn't getting the very simple things that she needed from, from, a, from a loving, safe presence, which was also strong. Yeah. Can you tell, tell me a bit more about that? Like what is the healthy masculine? Because a lot of men are striving to be that, right? Every man that I work with wants to be better so badly. And yes. what is it then? Yeah. It's clarity. Clarity. It's certainty. It's knowing self. Hmm. From the top of the head to the tip of the toes, knowing absolutely everything about himself. So when he does step to a woman, he brings nothing but vastness Mm -hmm. and he can actually see her for what she is 
without projecting onto her all the conditioning that's been put in him about what a woman should be and how a woman should look and how a woman should behave and sound. And this allows him to actually start to place love upon her in a way that she's never experienced before because she's truly being seen. So for me, the healthy masculine is a man who's already went through his own internal surrender process to his God, to his creator, Mm -hmm. to the godliness in him. So he's not trying to do his life with his mind. And he has something far more intelligent guiding him here. I knew you were going to leave me speech this morning. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing good. It's early. (laughs) It's nine minutes in. There we go. This very rarely happens, by the way. (laughs) It's not normally what happens to me. Okay. It's very, very beautiful. I'm right away. I know this is a situation for me comes up where I have a lot of couples or men and women also coming to me with the situation that, you know, the feminine has so many feelings and there can be lots Mm -hmm. happening, ups and downs, and it can be so big and it can be so dark. How do you remain or do you have to remain in this healthy masculine when you are confronted with, or when you're in front of a woman in her fullness, in her full emotional body, a full sexual body? Like how, how are there boundaries there and how to keep that position? When you say keep that position, do you mean staying grounded or? Yeah. Like what if she's a lot? Right? A lot of women have the pain well, of being so. afraid they're too much. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Yeah. But that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> that's as as soon as I as soon as I got out of my childishness, as soon as mm-hmm. I said, wait a second, life is about energy. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing that carries more energy than anything on this planet is a woman mm-hmm. who is embodied and who is willing to feel herself. So then immediately I went looking for that. It's like, how can I be more around that energy? And as soon as I asked that, then I started to see all the ways that I was deeply afraid of being overwhelmed yeah, by her. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a practice for men. It's something that you cannot read a book on. It's nothing that you can go to a workshop for. This is <laughs> literally about how the man is willing to show up in his life and his body mm. and the ways that he needs to learn to stay present and to capacitate as energy increases. And this is so much of a man's work. How can he continuously ground down as life gets more and more overwhelming? Because what I started to experience was the deeper I could be in myself, in my maleness, Mm -hmm. the more she would get bigger. So it was almost a catch-22. It's it's like, okay, I'm, I'm staying grounded, but just when I get grounded, no, she gets bigger. And I have to capacitate again and learn to get grounded again. And she gets bigger again. And this is the power of polarity. Yeah. So as men, we learn by showing up, by being comfortable, being uncomfortable, relaxing the body, opening the body, and allowing ourselves to actually feel our own feminine. Because that's what men are afraid mm-hmm. of. Feeling feelings that yeah. don't look manly. So um, I have a lot of men that come to me that say, I want to feel. Mm. My woman wants me to feel. I don't really feel that much. Mm. So what do you think is happening there? Or what, or, or what, what would you advise men that really have trouble accessing their feelings? What's, what's happening? Why? Because I, I really see so many men that want to. They want to feel. And they're, they're just like, I, I only see two colors. I don't see much more than that. Right? I see two things. I kind of feel shitty and I kind of feel good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Embodiment practices are going to be very beneficial to him. Anything that allows him to have some have some peace and some space away from his from his mind in that way. So this is why I'm a big proponent of qigong. I teach a lot of qigong to to both men and women, but mainly to men uh, because it's very nourishing in his. Uh, in his desire to actually feel his body and to feel his power, because that's really what men want to feel. Mm -hmm. Men want to feel powerful. 
and a man will look around in his life to see what's reflecting his power back to him. If something is not reflecting power back to him, he's, he doesn't want to go there because it's no longer life affirming for him. So mm. we carry so much tension in the body. We carry so many blockages in the body. Men, we tend to be very uh, trapped in the clavicle, in the chest and the heart behind the heart because he doesn't mm. want to feel himself right down into the hips, the pelvis, the genitals, his positive pole energetically. You know, he's afraid to be there. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's not as easy as, you know, just start to feel. It's going to be a long process of him learning how to literally be in life in a totally different way in a way where he no longer has an out. Where he what no do you mean with that? Where he no well, longer he has an out? He can't run away. Mm. Because everyone wants to run away from stuff. But then when you start to feel yourself, you realize you're the one that you're trying to run away from. <laughs> so someone will come to me for energy work and they're like, you know, I want to feel again. And then I open things up and they're feeling again. And now they're like, oh, well, I don't want to feel that. I want to run away from it. But now it's in their body. So where do they run? <laughs> They're stuck with it. So I'm fascinated by the whole idea that we can call each other in our power, right? Because I can feel more feminine with a certain man next to me because of all this polarity work. And I love the masculine next to me because it allows me to go deeper into me. Mm-hmm. But I'm also fascinated by the, by the version mm-hmm. of that coming from men that can we as the, as the feminine or as women call men into their power and what about if that is in a situation that there is, for instance, tension in a relationship? How do we call him into his power when there is a situation that he might not be showing up to, to at, its, at his best? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll reflect that many women will, when I'm working with them, will say to me, I really want a powerful man. Yeah but she's in no way treating him powerfully. She's in no way communicating to him as if he is a king. Because in many instances, women have been the thing in his life that has dysfunctionally shut him down and made him weak. So it needs to also really begin from her words, from how she responds, from knowing herself enough that she can put her ego and her childishness down to the side and walk away from it temporarily so she can actually allow him to assure he does something that isn't perfect. But if you want to support the power in him, then be in your feminine, be soft, purr, you know, let him know that you feel him, let him know that you receive him. And from that place, then you can start to reflect to him everything. You can say, "Mm -mm, ugh, didn't like that. And then he changes something and you're like, "Mm, mm, yes, Mm, my body loves that. And men will start to wake up. You'll start to notice. You'll start to look for your reflection. (laughs) So beautiful again. I... But it's really important that women realize that they don't, that they actually support and, and actively consciously attempt to empower the people that they're also beating up at the same time. Yes, yes. This is why I'm so motivated about men because their 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 plight is a very confusing one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally, it's a very confusing one. And all these women saying like, "I wanna, I want somebody to treat me like a queen." And if you then ask them, "Are you treating him like a king?" It's like, "No, he has to prove me that he's a king." I'm like, yeah. That's not fun for anybody to be in. Yeah, that's not fun for anybody to be in. Could you imagine that a man would be like, "You need to show me that you were a queen." That's not um, fun. That's nobody wants to step up to that. That doesn't invite anything. That's a, that's a, that's a, almost making somebody wrong and then them needing to defend themselves to you about who they are. Yes. And that doesn't work. Um, what I do find really sometimes the nuance in this is difficult because what's the difference between complaining or nagging or criticizing and just expressing your dislike, like the purring. And I, I love that, the expressing of just like, mm, I like this, and like, mm, not that. What's the difference between just expressing from your feminine and it being maybe complaining or criticizing? Well, one of them is an attack. One of yes. them is, is from a princess pose, is what I mm-hmm. call it. Or is it, no, give me what I want. And that's, not giving that's me. The, 
that's the place it comes from. And as a man, I have zero tolerance for that. I'm like, yes. that cannot be supported in somebody. Okay. So from that place, the difference is that a reflection is not an attempt to be good or to be bad or to be right or to be wrong. It's simply a reflection. It's simply, this is the truth of my body in this moment. This is the truth of my heart in this moment. Baby, I love you. You're so beautiful to me. But right now you've done something and, and my body wanted to recoil a little bit. Not because I don't love you. Not because you're not good enough or you're not attractive enough. Because I'm a woman and my body is always responding and ebbing and flowing to everything that moves around it. Because that is her intelligence. Mm. What do you think men need from women to feel safe? Because we talk a lot about what women need for safety and it's a beautiful conversation in itself. And I've had many men come to me and say, what about me? When, when do we talk about my safety? Because I don't feel safe all the time. Well, he needs to go and get that himself. It's, yeah. not, a woman's, it's not a woman's place to bring it to a man. A man has to find it himself. That's why the man has to separate from everyone, go into the woods for 40 days and 40 nights and risk death until he becomes so self-knowing and self-reliant and self-trustworthy that now he comes back bringing a kingdom with him. Mm -hmm. say. So he's not looking for safety anymore because he knows the reality of life. So... That's see, we want to apply double standards. We want to say what's for a woman is for a man. Yep. It doesn't work like that. Women need safety from men. Men don't need safety from women. The man, the man has to get it himself. This is what will keep him powerful and potent enough and alive enough in himself in order to be able to protect community, the consciousness of the community, the mm. physicality of the community. And the woman is then here to feed that consciousness through her ability to embellish and love and create mm. and dance and just ooze herself over everything. That's what makes life worth living. So there's different ways that we need to approach that. Yeah. But a man most definitely needs to know that he is absolutely alone and he needs to drop to the floor and go through his emotions and his fear of mommy not being there and everything else until he can eventually stand himself up and dust himself up. So there is no pass for a man in this. So this may be a bit personal, but I notice whenever I'm confronted with the little boy in a man in front of me that it makes me so angry and then I'm out. I feel yes. very little patience to engage and i heard the same when you were speaking about princess behavior that you're like i mm -hmm. not accepting that not tolerating that and doesn't mean that that can't exist in the other person but i f for a mature individual i feel like you need to be able to hold that in yourself yes and, absolutely and, and the little boy energy is just not safe for you and based on where you want to go sexually and internally and energetically you realize that you need a much stronger presence who can be there for you and that, be there with you and that. So a tricky situation there is, for instance, <clears throat> when there, when it feels like maybe sex is on the table between a couple this evening, because it usually happens on Thursday evening after dinner, mm -hmm. and her body says no because there's an expectation and he can get a bit in his little boy because he feels like he was maybe owed. And not that he wants to force this woman, but I know that I've heard from several men that there can be this kind of like, but this was happening, right? How yeah. to navigate that energy because it's a strong force of just feeling like sex was maybe owed or promised or expected. And I think my question also a bit in that is if the male sexual energy feels like such a strong potent energy, mm -hmm. like it, it feels like one of the strongest forces in the world how to be with that as a man when you have to just cut it halfway and you just need to stop it. Well, you don't need to cut it. You right. don't need to stop it because mm -hmm. what a man needs to do in his process is because there's, there's two types of way, ways that a man will approach his sexual energy based on mm -hmm. his level of development. The first is I'm feeling my sexual energy. I have an erection. I need to do something with it. On the I outside. Must, use it yeah like yeah. i must use it i must i must dissipate i must release myself so that's the child's pose of of the 
of the state of development. And the process is really going to be about for his maturation is a man feeling that the intensity and the power and the potency of the sexual energy, his erection, just who he is in this moment. And rather than moving outwards with it, sitting back into it. Hmm. And this will pull everything else. The woman will literally start to, she'll start to come looking for him. Yeah, because the neediness she, is gone. Yeah, but she also wants something to be able to reach for. Yeah. This is what men are forgotten. It's men are like, oh, I, I'm the seducer and I must go seduce and I must go charm. And, and it's like, that's not the posture of a king. That's when you understand energy, that's not what is intended to happen. We're there to show up in the space and initiate the space with our sex. Then we sit back and we let her dance for it. Oh, we sit back that. so she has the ability to actually start to go into her seductive, soft, so she can start to find your penetration inside of her before she even ever meets you physically. So by the time you do meet physically, she's already at 100 at that point. <laughs> and this is what I feel modern men and, and something that I had huge difficulty with earlier on in my process was patience hmm. and presence with sexuality, presence within sexual energy, not wanting to go and, as I said, just disperse it everywhere. So coming back to the question that you had about that man and the woman who's like not feeling in the mood, men tend to approach women the way that they approach men yes quite logically and he will usually be in his head in that moment saying shit i don't think she wants sex how do i how do i what do i need to do here my response to to men that i'm working with in every opportunity is take the opportunity to love her even more if you want a woman to be turned on to be aroused to want to be available for sex all the time you need to love her you need to be sensitive with her. You need to know how to touch her. You need to know how to sit presently with her. Because this is all the ways that we as men love women. We love through our presence, through our beingness. So once a man gets that part, gets that part in alignment in himself, he'll never have to figure out how do I approach her? What do I need to say to her? How do I need to have her turned on? His very fragrance will be enough as he walks past her in the room, just to have her quiver a little bit. Yeah. Because she feels him feeling her. Mm. The energy keeps circling. Yeah. I, I love working with the archetypes. You're reminding me very much of the seducer archetype who feels like he needs to do some kind of manipulation to get what he wants. And there's so much of it in the man's sphere. So he has to play a game to get her when actually a woman knows very well what she wants. Exactly. And she knows when she wants and to give her that freedom. Space is very important. So she has something to reach for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because I think the feminine very much wants to. I noticed like I was in that pattern a lot myself where the moment he expected sex, I didn't want it anymore. Even though I have a high mm -hmm. sex drive, I would just block. I'm just like, nope, I'm, I'm obligated now. I'm out. And it was because I desperately needed to make the step into the space. Mm hmm. I needed to be the person that said, okay, I want this now. Yeah, your, your playground is the subtle. Yeah. So for you as a woman, it's all, you kind of almost want it to be more like, I think he just touched me. Did he touch me? Or did he? <laughs> so you can go looking a little bit, so you can inquire energetically, so yeah. you can lean into him a okay. little bit, and he doesn't make it all just so physical and visceral. So it's, again, for the man learning to be more sensitive to her nature so he can really feel where she's at. And you don't really need to do anything other than that. Because at that point, as the man continues to know himself, now what he brought yesterday or what he's bringing today will just be more of his potency that he didn't have yesterday. And next week the same, and next month the same, and it just continues. What's the difference between like this king energy that you're describing and playing hard to get? Well, I'm not here to be gone. Right. So that's oh. off the table Oof. immediately. I love that. You can't get me. Right. I can, I can choose to share myself with a mm. woman. 
and and bring that that flavor to the space and see if she wants to brush up against it but if that's not what's happening then it's fine there's nothing lost i haven't committed to anything other than myself and to my my absolute desire to honor her and to leave her better off than than i found her i love that and not to be gotten yeah <laughs> that's gorgeous yeah um yeah, let me feel I'm again speechless uh second time <laughs> 20 minutes in <laughs> <laughs> yes i the topic i'm thinking about a lot is kind of we we demonize the male sexuality we demonize the male turn on the male sex drive the um, like that it's less than <clears throat> That it's less than, that it's somehow more primal and, and especially in the goddess empowerment, like the female sexuality is this goddess movement and it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And I'm not saying that that's the reality for every woman, but that's very much what I hear everybody speak about. But like, how come we're not considering the male sexual energy with so much reverence and it just it, it still feels like we're we're demonizing it because we we prefer as a society and as a culture to celebrate the people who are center stage <laughs> and the way i see it is as a man our energy our sexual energy is an initi- is an initiation it's a spark it's a trigger it's you know we're going to turn on the light switch but then she's the light and she goes and dances and everyone's like oh look at the light but then now you're in a situation where you have men who've been so dysfunctionally feminized that now he's walking around trying to be the light, trying to yeah. be center stage and actually disacknowledging his quiet power Oof. and yeah. what makes him so sturdy and so steady in himself. And I feel many men are taking on this externalized posturing in their life, which is, um, mm. I just want to preface, I never feel anyone should be anything Right. And not be another thing. But I'm just speaking in the more generalized terms of what this energy looks like. Okay. Is I see men being so uncomfortable with their own male energy yeah. and how it feels in their body that they're abandoning it and wanting to have more of a female experience in their life, uh, have a more female experience in sex, yeah. where he kind of just forsakes himself. And it's not because he's at fault. It's just because society, as you said, has demonized male sexual energy and it's seen as being bad and dangerous and abusive and dark and toxic and all these other words. So, you know, we we want to be good people. So by default, we want to run away from that. So what do you think is the main challenge or or the the main invitation almost for for men in the world right now, because I recognize very much what you said, a lot of men are in this very soft feminine space, actually. And a lot of the women are like, where are the men? And the men yes. think, but we're, we're trying our best. We're doing exactly what you want us to. Well, that's the problem. There <laughs> yeah. is the problem. That men are still treating every woman like his mother. Mm. Or he's trying to do right by women. And I say this to men all the time. Don't fucking do your men's work for women don't do it to try to be with women don't do it to try to get something from women you have to do it for yourself because otherwise all of your men's work is going to be compromised and she'll actually never get to feel you with the potency that she needs and requires to feel you and why it's so important for men to be in their essence in this way is because and what you're seeing right now on the planet is the fact that men are not showing up means that everything is falling apart. And that's just what's happening. Everything is falling apart. Women are fucking starved. Yes. And it's, it's ridiculous that I even have the job that I have with women. Like women will have to find a stranger on the internet through word of mouth, pay him money to have a loving, beautiful, powerful, activating type of an experience that she should be able to literally step outside the door of her house, look around to any men in her vicinity and know that that man can be there for her in that way. 
that that man can open his arms and allow her just to let it go, that she doesn't have to carry it all herself. Mm. So the men really need to realize that we have a specific role here. And as we start to step into that, you'll see healthy femininity starting to, starting to show up. But if men don't go first, it's impossible because she's never going to be safe. The women are waiting for the men because we have to be the holder of that space. We have to be the keeper, the guard. Yeah. And this is why I work with men. Yeah. I'm, I'm really moved by you, I notice. Um. Feel it. Feel it. And this is what they're not getting, you see. This is the thing, what you're feeling in you right now is what women are not getting just the normal opportunity to feel on a daily basis through all males. I'm not special. I'm not better than any other man. I've just done my work. And if I can do it, every man can do it. And that's what I'm hoping can be transmitted through this conversation is how deeply men are needed. Men do not need to hear, do your work. Men do not need to hear, you know, grow up. Men need to hear the world is fucking falling apart and you're the only one who can bring it back right now. Men respond to calling, not to you should do this differently. Mm, but men no. respond to calling. Not yeah, to, you that's do why when their partner or their woman or, you know, their wife or their girlfriend comes to them and just tells them what they're not doing and what they should be doing, that's his mother nagging him and he's not being called to anything. Or she could approach him and go, you know, oh, I wish you could be more present because when you're more present, my body feels like this and it feels like that. And it's so beautiful to me. And then let him decide if he wants to step into that. And also women need to actually have space for a man. Yes. Which is the other thing. Because right now women have become so independent, which is masculine, beautiful, but not in a healthy way. So yeah, this is my story. I burnt out completely because I was a strong, independent woman and I was everything that a woman should be, I thought. And I was yeah. so burnt out. My body collapsed mm-hmm. because I just, I was, ne- I never surrendered. I didn't even know that was an option. I thought I always had to defend my independence and make sure that nobody thought I really needed them and that no, no man ever felt like I was, like I was maybe needy or crazy or whatever. I was always trying to be the most easygoing, low maintenance chick that was one of the dudes and that took care of her own shit. And I burnt mm-hmm. out. And for me, the practice was first trying to find my, at least trying to find the opening into surrendering. And then when there was a healthy mask in front of me, I could fall completely into her. Yes. And then most of my healing is now because there's a healthy mask in my life that I can fully surrender to and, and, like there's a weird thing. I've had sweaty hands my whole life. I don't have sweaty hands anymore. Like it's like my nervous system was always alert mm-hmm. and it isn't. It's hard energy. Sweaty hands is hard energy. It's yeah, stagnation. Like it's alert. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was making sure everything's still okay. And I don't have to do that anymore because somebody else has got it. And, and mm-hmm. you know, that's, and, and I grieve. I grieve for all the years that I did not have that. And I, I work with women exactly on this because this is such a deep pain in women of just, Thinking the independence is what what is the highest achievable thing. Mm-hmm. And then, we've lied to her. Yeah, we've lied to her. Weak men who are afraid of her have lied to her. Because it's easier to control her when she's in her masculine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's easier to control her when she's in her masculine. Yeah. Because the feminine is too big. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I feel you. I feel you. What is your advice for women who are so in their strong, independent woman or I'm just deeply would love to surrender. Just don't even know how. Never had, never had a, a, an, an example, never saw it. Well, the first thing that I'd let her know is that you're not being strong. You just think you're being strong. That's what's been sold to you as strong, where you're running from yourself. 
also the fact is you have to look at that she probably doesn't have healthy male energy around her to fall back on or to lean against. So then I'm kind of limited what I can say to her, right? Because if I say, well, abandon the masculine and, and stop being like that or don't be like that, then she's like, well, no, what? Because life falls apart. Yeah. So it's a difficult situation to speak to. Um, definitely do, do practices and, and learn to, to feel her body again and to feel her emotions again and to be willing to bring her tears to people and to see her emotion and her feeling as the most powerful tool mm -hmm. that she has access to in her life, that there is nothing in her more powerful and more transformative than being able to bring her heart into situations, even the ones that are deeply painful, even the ones that are deeply terrifying to her, that feel like she's almost risking her life or she's risking her vulnerability. Can she stay true to her heart? Can she stay in that place and just express what comes up for her in that moment? Yeah. And also calling on the men around her, not being afraid to say, I wish you could hold me for a moment because I need it because yeah, it was, yeah. wasn't designed for me to have to carry everything on my shoulders. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, send her to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can help. <laughs> I think lots of, I think your inbox might be full real soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I teach this to women I, just to have the option that you don't need to do it all alone. So if you need to go to that key and you don't want to do it alone, don't do it alone. Reach out. Yeah. Because men also want to be needed, right? They're, they want to feel so their power, badly. like you were saying. Right? They want to step up. They want to help you. Mm -hmm. But you got to reach out. You have to open the door. You have to pick up the phone and say, hey, yeah. I need somebody to help me carry those boxes. Are you available? Mm -hmm. that's saying. not weak. That's strong. Yeah. Yeah, that's not weak. That's strong. Uh, why do you think we, we fear this the feminine so much why is that so scary why is it so scary to feel because we were disconnected from feeling pretty early on in our lives because we were told it was bad we, we have trauma around feeling mm. we have trauma around being full of energy because mm. you're a little child and little children are the most orgasmic balls of life force mm. that that you can yeah. see and, and then what do we do? We, we strangle them and we tell them be quiet and shut up and sit still and do your homework. And, and then before they know it, they're wearing a suit and tie and they're also numb and dead and depressed. Yeah. So it's overwhelming just because it's different. Yeah. And we, we simply just, be... just hmm? and we were told not to be this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. this is our authentic nature, that energy that just wants to propel us to things that make us feel good in our body, our bliss, our pleasure. What's deeply in alignment for us will always feel very blissful to us. And that is a turn on in our body. Because when we come from children to, to adults, that, that energy now is almost like a sexual turn on. And because we have so much dysfunction around sex, yeah. That energy gets mixed up into it, and now we just want to turn it all down. We don't want to be seen to have any level of humanity to us. And I feel that's, that's the reason why feeling is, is so feared, because it's not normal. Mm. And certainly not for men. Certainly not for men. <sighs> How can... I know you or somebody told me that you are the master at this. How... If we, for instance, say like as a man, when you're sitting in front of a woman, feel your woman, you know, experience her, take her in. How do you feel somebody's energy? How do you feel? Right. I, I, I usually say like really experience her. Like, what do you see her do? What does she smell like? Like use your senses. Um, what can you taste? Like what's, what's the physical experience of being in front of her? But that's one level. So how, how can we actually feel somebody's energy? How can we tune into that, especially when like feeling and things like that have been something you've always kind of suppressed? Mm -hmm. Well, immediately you have to feel yourself first. Mm. 
Yeah, so, and, and you can feel me feeling you right now because mm -hmm. I can feel you feeling me feeling you right now because mm -hmm. your temperature shifted. <laughs> so that's just a reflection just right. for, for the practical aspect of what I'm trying to yeah. communicate. Yeah. Uh, it's about sensitivity. It's about sensitivity. And the more that the man or the individual can feel themselves and feel their own energy. It's through our own senses and our own aliveness that we get to make contact with everything else around us. It's, it's, a, it's a very sensual and tactile experience when you get sensitive. Mm. So the process is resensitizing, which means as a byproduct, you have to feel everything, not just pleasure, but also all your pain and all your trauma and everything else. I can show you or I can communicate my experience of this, which is I start to feel you in me because mm -hmm. there's no time and space here. There's no separation. So I start to feel where you live in me. And as soon as I start to feel you in me, now I can start to be with you in specific ways that creates some level of symbiosis and, mm -hmm. and intertwining and dancing. But it, it's all on the subtle. Yeah. But for the man being able to notice everything when he comes to a woman, to the point where he can almost feel without touching her what her skin would feel like, mm. how her breath is ricocheting through her body as it comes out of her nose or her mouth, uh, where her sound is coming from in her body, uh, what parts of her might be constricted or what parts of her might be open. If you go looking, you'll naturally start to, it'll be brought to you. That's how energy works. It's all intention based. So as soon as you put the intention out there to locate something, if the man has acquired the ability to, to be present enough with himself and to stay focused and not to be just pulled up into his Facebook status in his head, then he'll be able to stay with her. Yeah. And it comes in different sections. So first he learns to, okay, I think I felt her. Okay, yeah, I think I can feel her. But then he keeps losing her. So then he has to realize in his life that he needs to learn how to stay present mm -hmm. rather than just dropping in and out. So for men who are interested in feeling kind of sexual energy, because I think the a female body is much more maybe naturally designed for the sexual energy to be a bit more full-bodied mm -hmm. and not so localized. Um, how can men access this? Because I have a lot of men that would love to feel multi-orgasmicness or, or energetic orgasms, but because their sexual energy is so potent in one area of their body, it seems so hard to make that a full body thing. And I, I feel like a way in, in that is the sensational, the senses, what you were, the sensitization that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious what, what else you, you know about this. What I've come to realize is that a man's multi-orgasmicness or a man's mm -hmm. bliss is not even attached to sex. Mm. For us as men, our level of orgasmicness in our lives is going to be directly to the level that we are connected to our identity and who it is we are on this planet and allowing ourselves full permission to walk around, to swing our dick, to do what we need to do in the way that we need to do it. Yes. And as long as we're attached to compassion and love, that's, that's the way it's got to be. So a man's, because it's a woman who pulls in and gets turned on. Mm hmm the man is the switch. So, mm -hmm. so the man is the self-generating energy. The man is like the sun, self-generating. The woman is lunar by nature. It's the moon. She's just reflecting the sun. She's pulling in the, the rays from the sun and she starts to feel that aliveness through her. So the self-generating aspect for the man is knowing and having a deep sense of contact to who he is and what he's here to do. The penetration. Absolutely. Yeah. Because then that's what will keep him upright and strong and firm in his life for himself and for her. Uh, the multi-orgasmic aspect of it, 
that comes into his more feminine aspects at that point because his mm. penetration and his firmness that's going to be his being that's going to be his what he's here for yeah. so we do also get to experience sex in a feminine way which is that multiple orgasmicness that we feel as men that full body tingling and rushing and surging which is really just our own feminine energy responding to how powerful our inner man is mm-hmm. so as a man starts to get stronger in his male his inner woman starts to swoon more <laughs> it's like oh i got the vapors look at this beautiful man so he starts to experience inside his own woman just like not really being able to do much she's like what do i do with my hands it's like it's all a bit too much right now so he really will learn you know how to be with a woman through learning to be with himself and his own internal woman first yeah. but it's not all just outgoing and that's the difference men want to make life outgoing because it's safer for him but he needs to also be willing to drop back in and feel the result and the response of his externalization. Because mm. mm, mm. then he can just play with a woman so beautifully when he's with her physically and when he's with her intimately because he can really drop in between both of those energies. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What do you think is the role of sexual energy outside of a sexual act? Because mm. anybody who does anything with Tantra can feel that it's everywhere. But for people who are newer to this, that might sometimes feel very abstract, like that sexual energy, life force is there the whole day. Like, are we supposed to just be horny all day? Like, what, what is it then? <laughs> well, horniness has nothing to do with sexual energy. Horniness is actually a, a deficiency of sexual mm. energy Ooh. it's an empty heat looking to express itself it's like a drug addict they're not healthy they're burnt up inside and they're needing to fuel the addiction to fill mm. the hole it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger so a man might come or, or a woman could even come to me and say you know my man he's he's so full of sexual energy he just wants to fuck every day yeah it's like no that's a deficiency because if he was full he wouldn't have that desire and men start to experience this when they do things such as uh, semen retention. Yeah. After a certain period of time, he realizes that he's no longer aroused. Instead, he just turns on when there's something that's turning him on. So if there's a woman who's embodied in front of him, his body responds. Mm. Whereas before he responds to a laptop, he responds to a magazine, he responds to things that are dead that are just conditioning, that are addictive in nature. Um, So that's the first point that I I wanted to clarify, just from my experience. Mm -hmm. And in terms of just sexual energy, everything is sex. Everything that exists is a polarity. The only thing something can be here, the only way something can be here is because there's a plus and a minus somewhere that has charged and created the thing in the middle. So every interaction between every person, every time you take a breath, there's polarity. Yeah. You know, when you take in, you're in minus. When you exhale, you're, you're in your positive polarity. So by that being the way life functions, life is one big cataclysm of sex. It's just sex all the time. And the way that we can get in alignment with that to be most potent and healing and supportive for us is to start to deconstruct and de-brainwash our own relationship to what society and media says, this is sex. Because that's such a tiny window of what sex actually is. And for men, sex begins long before you're in bed with a woman. That's something men really need to come to grasp. Sex begins as soon as you make eye contact with her. Because if you really know how to feel her, you can actually, you can be inside of her. She'll feel you penetrating her. Oh, yes. Just with how you look at her. Yeah. So it's all subtlety. We need to get more sensitive. It sounds almost like for that, men always need the quietness and the stillness and the patience, the spaciousness. I think there's often in the masculine, there's this kind of rushiness of like, mm-hmm. here's how you can fix it. Like little, little, there's mm-hmm. this like rushness to their 
to them needing to jump in or needing to do something with the situation and with everything that you're saying i'm just overcome with this like there's such spaciousness to how you're describing these interactions it's timelessness of just okay you know and in order to to access the subtle you have to get really quiet so yeah you have to be able to hear it first yeah (laughs) you can't do that if you're like pushing or rushing or whatever it is patience is the bridge for men to yeah learn. yeah Oof. if he doesn't have patience with her he'll never actually meet her he'll never actually know her he'll never be able to love her because you love her with patience until she's needing a different texture from you mm. maybe she's bringing up her brattiness and she's poking you because she's like please you know i want to see you push back against me right now so i can trust you Boundaries are sexy. Then, exactly. <laughs> so then you get to say, as a man, stop being a fucking brat. Yeah. And then she's like, thank you. Yes. So she can open deeper. And I feel men are so terrified at any level of combativeness with women, especially mm-hmm. men in the spiritual realm. Yep. He wants to do everything so perfectly and presently. And it's like, no, sometimes she needs you and she longs for you to pick her up and put her down somewhere that she needs to be put down in that moment. And she needs to be checked and she needs to be called on it. And she needs to feel it's coming from love and not from control. That's the difference. Yeah. I always think about this, like are are women testing men? I don't know if I'm actually testing him, but I, I want to feel that he will keep his boundaries so that I can trust him. Yes. That I know he's got his own back. Because if he's got his own back, I can be as big, as small, as dark, as light as I want to. He's going to take care of himself. I don't have to take care of him. I could surrender. Yes. So it's not necessarily that I'm testing him to see, like, how much shit can I get away with? It's actually I want to feel where your boundaries are so I know I can let go. Mm -hmm. And I can trust you where you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very important for men to, to hear that. Yeah. And also, like, like I, I work with a lot of nice guys and they're like, yeah, but I have to stay present, right? And when she's so emotional, I have to stay present. I have to be there. I was like, yes, but no, if she's calling you names, if she's being abusive, if she's being bratty, if she, her princess is coming out, like don't stand for it from love, from your masculine presence to say, no, not like this. Mm-hmm. I want to connect with you. Not like this. Yes. And she'll love you more. Totally. She loves the integrity. <laughs> Mm-hmm. integrity of yeah, heart and, and it's something worth opening to yeah something worth, opening thing. To. It's worth, it's something worth opening to okay one last question i think what when <clears throat> women say where are all the good men mm-hmm. where are all the good men where are all the good women yeah it's both sides do men feel this too do men feel what like where are all the good women? I can't find the good women. Is that a similar? No, thing? not usually because he's usually so caught up in trying to be what women want yeah. of him, or he's trying to figure out ways to manipulate and take from her. So he either wants to use her or abuse her, but it's it's rare that men would kind of approach it in that way. Yeah. Um, and nobody is bad. We're just not being raised properly. We're, we're not being. Yeah grant the gift of of being around intelligent men and intelligent women as we're children who are truly embodied in healthy ways and who truly know how to be in their softness while also being in their fierceness in a very admirable, magnificent way. And mm. that that's you know that's what's needed yeah. more than anything. Men are good and women are good. Yeah. We're just given a really raw deal. Yeah. Yeah. What do you love about the feminine? What do you love about <laughs> every time I ask a man this question, it's like oh. I mean, where do I start? <laughs> because that question isn't even just like for the external woman. It's it's for like my feminine who has saved my fucking life. Mm. You know, who has me be so intuitive and allows me to be so deeply in alignment with my creator and with Mm. spirit Um, also being able to just feel 
the softness from from an external woman in a way where I have no access to that with over in a way of how just feeling her heart teaches me more about love than anything else in my life has women's hearts and the level that women have loved me in my life have it's made me want to be better it's made me want to have something to protect because i've i've now i can't even figure out i can't even comprehend as a man how to bring that level of devotion that i've experienced in different ways from different women in my life how i could ever even return that in that exact flavor i can return it just as potently in my way but in that way i mean that's hers and i need that in my life i need women in my life and i feel we need to we need to be okay to say that that a man can be okay to say you know i need a healthy woman in my life and a woman can say i need a healthy man in my life because of how much more beautiful it makes my life yeah and women embellish everything <laughs> and for me women are life affirming yeah they let me know that i'm actually here and that i'm impactful mm. and that what i'm doing is necessary and just even speaking with you today and seeing you know you reflecting and responding and feeling what's going on in your body when i'm engaging and like all of that is such a beautiful gift to me because it allows me to stand up bigger and firmer and stronger and be here for love and for compassion so yeah that's a little bit of a what <laughs> and the feminine brings a beautiful speechless <laughs> <laughs> on that beautiful beautiful note i want to thank you thank you so so much chris for your wisdom thank you so much for having me wow. wow 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 this is so this is so important this conversation and mm -hmm. i can feel that it's going to be deeply impactful for the people who are listening so thank you thank you thank you so much <laughs>